Hello and welcome to the Productivity Exchange. Today we're looking at making bulk changes in Jira. If you find yourself making the same change to many issues and it's taking you a lot of time, maybe bulk changes are for you. Now there are two things that could potentially get in your way. The first is not having sufficient privileges within Jira. You'll need to talk to your systems administrator to get that sorted out. I'll have details down in the description. The second is that you might not be entirely comfortable or familiar with Jira filters. If that's the case, I have a video that I'll link to above here. All right, and with all that, let's jump into it. Now, the first thing we'll want to do is find all of the issues that we want to bulk change in a filter view. So for that, let's go to filters and then either use one of our saved starred filters or we can use advanced issue search. That should give us a list like this. The other way that you can pull up filter lists is using the dashboard. So from here, if I go to one of my dashboards, we can see that I can click on any of these fields here and pull up a very specific list of all of those issues in that same filter view. That will work for us too. Now, once you have all of the issues that you want to do the bulk change to, and don't worry if there are a few sprinkled in here that you don't want to make changes to, I'll get to that in a second. But the next thing that you'll want to do is come up here and click on the three dots and then click bulk change all. In my case, 26 issues. Now you'll be presented with this view here. You can choose which items you want to do the bulk change to, or you can just select all and then deselect the ones that you don't want to make the change to. In my case, I want to make the change to all of them. And then I'll just scroll to the bottom, click next. And then I'll be asked to choose what action I want to perform. In this case, they've split it out into several different components. The first of which lets you change the fields within an issue. The second lets you move an issue from one project to another. And if the issue type doesn't exist, then you migrate it over and then the corresponding fields will match over. The next will let you transition issues. This can be a little bit tricky if you have custom workflows, but not impossible. The next lets you permanently delete issues, although I would steer clear of that and just archive them unless there's no work that's been done on them. You can also watch or stop watching issues, that is to receive notifications for them or to stop receiving notifications for them. These bottom three here are self-explanatory, so I'll focus on the ones up here. Now, the first one that I'll look at is transition issues. So this is to move issues through a workflow. So if I click next, I can then choose what status to transition items to. If you have a custom workflow and not all of the issues that you've selected are in the same status, then it will give you multiple prompts here. So for things in this status, where do you want to move them? In my case here, I can just choose to move all of them into one particular status. Once you've chosen that, you click on next and it will ask you to confirm the details. You can also send a mail for this update. Odds are that you're going to be doing this to a large number of issues and you're going to be sending a lot of notifications to people. So I tend to leave this unticked and then just hit next. Now, I won't hit next, I'll go back to choose operation. Now, the next one that we're looking at is move issues. And you'll notice that it's come up with a warning here. So what this is saying is that if I were to move the issues that I'm moving, that it might break the Epic link, depending on the type of project that you have created, whether it's one of the team managed projects or a company managed project. So I will click next. And this lets me choose what project I want to move these particular issues to and I can move them to say content management. And there isn't an issue type called task. There's only asset and a dummy one that I've created. So I will need to map these to a different issue type. Now, once you've decided which project you want to move these things to and which issue type you want to move these to and done that for all of the different splits here. So this is uh, by some attribute, it's split this out. You can go to next. And then it will ask you to determine what status gets moved to where. So in my case, all of the 26 issues are in the to-do status. So I only get one entry here and it just lets me choose what the target status should be. In this case, I could choose draft and then select next. And then it will just ask me to confirm whether or not this is what I want to do. And again, it will ask me whether or not I want to send a mail for all of this. 
Once I've confirmed all of this, I can hit next and then it will go ahead and do the operation. I will go back and choose a different operation and I will walk through the edit issues. So if I go to edit issues and hit next, I can see here I can change most fields in an issue. There are some that are unavailable, such as these here. And others that are also not available include the description field and the summary field. But in general, you can change most issue fields. This includes labels, where you can add to existing, replace all with, clear the field, or find and remove particular ones that you type into this list down here. Or you can change the parent or epic. And here you'll even see that I've got these custom fields that I've created called custom short text, which I can edit and change in bulk for all of these issues. I can also leave a comment on all of these cards in bulk and even tag people in them. I can change the issue type, the priority, and even the assignee. Once I've decided on the changes that need to be made to this issue and made them up here, I can come down here and select send mail for this update. In most cases, again, leave this unticked and then just hit next. This will then give me the confirmation screen, which I can then go through and look at and then hit confirm. Now you'll see this dialog box here and a refresh. This automatically refreshes every 10 seconds or so, but you can also refresh it by hitting the refresh button. Once it's finished, you can acknowledge that. And here we are back at the filter view that we had before. Now I've changed the assignee to be Bob, which is different to that particular username, which I think was Florian. So if I change this assignee to Bob, and hit enter, I should be able to see those 26 issues again. There we go. And if I click into one of those, there should be a comment on the top that says, hi, Florian. And that's bulk changes in Jira in a nutshell. Now I would suggest not practicing this on your real issues that you've got in your project. I think it makes more sense to make some test items and practice with those, because if you do make a mistake in bulk changes, you're going to be making a mistake across a lot of items. So be very careful and make sure that you pay close attention to that confirm screen at the end too. And that brings us very neatly to the end of the video. If you found this useful, please share it with somebody else who might find it useful. And if you think it's worth it, leave a like and a subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.